it was it was really a an accident because the person who chaired the search committee that hired me at Penn they were looking for a for a person for a new chair in urbanism uh, happened to be Peter Linneman, who was the director of what was then called the real estate program at the Wharton School. It subsequently became a department a, few, a number right. of years later. And he explained to me that they taught their students the legal aspects of real estate, the financial aspects, and real estate development, but they didn't really deal with the physical side of, of buildings and design. And he asked me if I would be interested in teaching that and I had it was intriguing because I was I had always taught architecture students and and these were MBAs and real estate majors in the undergraduate program very different profile so that was kind of uh, it was tantalizing to teach a different kind of student and so I ended up putting together a course and I taught that for 20 years every once a year uh, it became quite a large class. It was at the end. It was close to sixty, seventy people, uh, and it was an introduction. I realized I really had to introduce these people first of all to the field, how architects thought. I wasn't trying to turn them into designers, right? But real estate developers work with architects, and and they right. have to. I thought they should understand how architects think what goes into a building and the basic assumption of the course was that design was not a uh, a constant in the development process it was really a variable that could actually contribute to the value in a in a building project absolutely and so that was the 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 goal of the course was to teach students how to do that and it, the first part of the course was an introduction to give them the sense of, of what architects did, the language of architecture, right. issues of style, the technical side. And then we looked at a number of specific building types. Obviously, we weren't going to deal with religious buildings and institutional buildings, but with commercial buildings. So right. I dealt with with housing, with uh uh, planned communities, multifamily housing, and then b building types like shopping malls and office buildings. Uh, and so that, and, and w at the end of the course, I also invited developers and architects to, to give talks about particular, their particular expertise, whether mm -hmm. it was multifamily or uh, renovation, restor you know, repurposing old buildings, which is a big, Thing, particularly in an old city like Philadelphia, and, I'm, and all over the country now, that's a, a particular uh, aspect of of uh, development. Uh, the class was actually a mixture. It was part, it, it actually had planning students, design students, <coughs> uh, as well as as business students. So they they did a team project at the end where they tended to work together. Right. Um, Des on the des on the financial side of a project and the design side of a project, but it wasn't just a question of of good design. It was a yeah. question of design that actually raises the value from a real estate development point of view of a project. Uh, so it was a question of trying to find examples where that really happened in in design, which isn't which is not that easy sometimes projects that architects like actually don't really function very well as development projects they may actually lose money so it wasn't just trying to say good architecture always makes for good development it was trying to find those special projects where the two really come together and when i started teaching the course there was no design in the course <clears throat> because i figured these students don't even know how to draw, so why, you know, why get into this? But it, it turned out that actually <clears throat> it was possible to make design part of it. So one of the problems they had was to lay out a planned community, a very small mm -hmm. single-family planned community. But it was really to give them a sense of what a planner does in terms of zoning and setbacks and right. layout. 
Uh, and so even though they were beginners, it was actually interesting. They were able to do some, some interesting work. And I thought initially that you know, the city planning and architecture students would have too big an advantage over the business students, but that really didn't turn out to be the case. And the, the business students, because they approached it in a kind of logical, rational way, could produce some pretty interesting plans in the end. Did you find that there was, is there a certain aspect? Let me see, let me go through this. So you, you started with the, the idea that a building uh, often tries to employ, and then there was the setting, the site, the, um, the plan, the, and then you get well, into the, the skin, the material, yeah. and the details, and then at the end, the taste. Is there a certain part of that which you find is usually the hardest and or overlooked by architecture students? And was there a part that you find was the hardest or most overlooked by the business students? That's a good question. I think the probably business students have difficulty, one, with the idea of the plan, because the plan is a very abstract thing, and yet it's in many buildings, it's the key to the building. I'm talking about the actual floor plan. Sure. And, and lay people are not used to reading floor plans. If you look at most magazines, the New York Times magazine, for instance, will show buildings, but they don't usually show the plans because people get confused yeah. by plans. And yet that's an important thing. It's an important part of architecture. So that, that's something I tried to introduce into the course and explain how to read plans. Um, I'd say that... Architecture students probably have most trouble with details. Really? Because they, they, most architecture students learn about designing buildings in a kind of global sense of designing the building, but they don't actually build buildings in school. They design buildings, but not building them. And details is something that really has to do with the construction process and, and the, the building when you get into an actual building, that's when the detail becomes a key thing. Whereas if you're doing a kind of general concept of a building, you're not really worried about details. So right. details are the thing that gets the least attention in the architecture education because it's the hardest thing to, to kind of deal with. Whereas the planning the building, laying it out on the building site, even the construction, the, the major structural system of a building, those are all things that architecture students spend time on. 